A God-sized vision requires a Christ-like distraction. A God-sized vision requires a Christ-like distract, distraction. And here's our challenge, and here's kind of where I want to wind up, wind up today. Our challenge is this. Look, we have desires, we have wants, we have needs. But unfortunately, instead of being distracted by the lost, we're too attracted to that which is found. And therefore, instead of being focused on what God's focused on, we're constantly consumed with our pain, with our desires, with our wants and our needs. Now listen, God knows you need those things. God, if you have pain, God, God is a healer. He wants to heal you from your hurt. God works miracles. God wants, he wants to bless you. He wants to do all kinds of things in your life. But what he's asking us is, look, let's become more attracted to God and less attracted to the world so we can get distracted by the lost and join God and help him in his search to seek and save the lost. We can help God shorten the line. And God's saying, I'll meet all those things. I'll meet all those needs that you're concerned about. Look at these scriptures here because we've got to change the way that we think. Look, delight yourself, Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you what? Say it, the desires of your heart. God doesn't even say needs. It's not like he said, you better delight yourself in me. I'll give you what you need eventually. God's saying, man, I wanna give you the desires of your heart. But to do that, I need you to delight yourself also. It doesn't say delight yourself only in the Lord. It says delight yourself also in the Lord. Join me, join my mission. Delight yourself in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. Stop focusing your energy on trying to meet your own desires. Focus your energy on helping God in his mission and God will say, I'll, meet, I'll, let, I'll see to it that those desires are met in a way that only God can do it. Look what it says here, Matthew 6, the scripture for our very mission statement of, of leading people to experience a God first life. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You notice it doesn't say, don't seek other things. What does it say? Seek, seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, I know that you're seeking other things. I know other things are important to you. But I need you to seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, his way of doing things. And what, what does it say? And all these things shall be added unto you. What things? All the things in the context of that scripture, in that passage of scripture in Matthew chapter six, it's all the things that we worry about all the time. We worry about money. We worry about relationships. We worry about all these things. God says, look, I know that you're thinking about all those things. I just, the thing that, and I know you're seeking those things, but the thing I need you to seek first is my kingdom. And I'll make sure that all of those things are added unto you. You know what, I've studied all in uh, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and you know what it means? It means all. <laughs> all of those things. Look at this scripture. Matthew 28, 19. Jesus says, go. Everybody say go. It's the go mentality. It's the distraction mentality. It's, it's where you're driven by distraction. Your attention is always diverted to that which is lost, which is valuable to God. He says, go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Did you see that? God says this, you go, you focus on finding that which is lost. You focus on Jesus. I will make sure that I'm with you always, no matter what. Now, this is not talking about salvation or anything like that. Here's what God's talking about. This is the tangible presence and favor of God. God's saying, if you're involved in my search, helping me search to seek and save that which is lost, listen, you've got my attention and I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. People, once again, what's the secret of celebration? Why is there so much favor? I'm telling you, because we're a go church. 
Because we are committed to seeking and saving that which is lost. That's why Jesus has always been with us no matter what. That's why his favor has always been on this church no matter what. That's why his blessing has always been on this church no matter what. And his blessing and favor is on your life as well. If you'll say, yes, I'm going to help Jesus seek and save that which is lost. I'm committed to that. So here's what God's saying and here's what we have to constantly have the mindset of. This is how we change the way we think. This is how we take ground. And it's this primary principle for Christian blessing, transformation, and happiness. And that is this. If you want to see ground taken in your life, all those things, all those desires, if you want to see those come to pass, God's saying this. You, God's saying, you help me take ground and I'll help you take your ground. You take ground for God and he'll take ground for you. It's that simple. This will uncomplicate your life. It's the God first life. It is the simplicity of the scripture. I'm gonna delight myself in the Lord. He's gonna give me the desires of my heart. I'm gonna seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm gonna focus my energy on that. You know, all these things that I'm worried about, God's gonna add them unto me. You know, if I just keep having that go mentality, if I stay distracted on that which is lost, on that which is valuable to God, you know, I know God is always gonna be with me even to the end of that. No matter what, he will always be with me. You commit to taking ground for God. I promise you, he will take ground for you in your personal life and what you're believing God for. And that's what this weekend is all about. You know, you'll pick up, if you haven't picked up your stakes at three o'clock, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna, plant those stakes in the ground. I can't wait till you see the footprint of the building. Oh, it is awesome. Well, here's my stake, okay? So on one side, I got a couple of lists here. On one side, it's kind of a general list about the church and all the people that are gonna be saved and free and make disciples and all that kind of stuff in the new building. But on the other side, this is Stovall's personal list. And we all have our personal list, don't we? So let me give you a, a few things off of my personal list here. Okay, so first of all, like, like my kids, these are specific things that I'm believing God for in my kid's life, in the stage that they're in, and also the future, who they marry, and things like that. There's personal things for kids. Some other personal things for our family. Here's one for me, uh, one personally for my health. Many of you know I had a, a, a heart surgery a couple of years ago and everything went great, but what they told me, they said, Stovall, your valve is fine now, but in like 25 years, possibly when you're in your 60s, we might have to replace uh, your heart valve. Oh no, they're not. <laughs> I'm believing God, I don't want my valve replaced. I I'm believing God, I don't, that valve is gonna stay supernaturally strong well into my 90s hundreds, whatever it is. I mean, I'm not getting a heart valve replacement. That's a personal thing. God's my healer. I got other things here, but you know, some other personal things. I mean, here's an important one. I have LSU winning the national championship. <laughs> so what you can do is you can put your college football team on there. We'll put our stakes in the ground and we'll see who wins and therefore we'll know who God likes the best. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all can at least agree that LSU needs a move of God after all those arrests and bar fights and all that kind of stuff. But see, we all, we all have our list, we have our desires, we have our things 